Hey guys, welcome back to Food for Thought Physics. Up until now, we've only been looking at kinematics in a single dimension, using a line as our frame of reference. So now we can consider kinematics in two dimensions, which involves using a coordinate plane as our frame of reference instead. So this coordinate plane is going to look like the coordinate planes you're probably familiar with. The rightward direction is going to be the positive x, left is negative x, up is going to be positive y, and down is going to be negative y. And so before we proceed further and continue on our kinematics as normal, we must first refine our notion of vectors. So if you remember, a vector quantity is a special type of quantity that we use a lot in physics. It's going to be any quantity that has both a magnitude and a direction. And these are going to be different from scalar quantities, which only have a magnitude but no direction. We can sort of visualize a vector on the coordinate plane as an arrow starting from the origin and going in some direction with some length. So for instance, if we simply draw a some ran, um, arrow to some random point on the coordinate plane here, we can call this a vector. And we're going to call this vector u. So this vector u is going to have both a magnitude and a direction, as I said before. So the magnitude of this vector is simply going to be the length of the vector. And we're going to represent this as um, a u with absolute value bars around it. So this is going to be read magnitude u, and it's just going to be the length of this vector here. The direction of this vector we can think of as just an angle, because on this coordinate plane, a single angle can represent a direction. So by convention, we, we define this angle as the angle starting from the positive x-axis and going counterclockwise this way. And we're going to call this angle theta. Well, what parts of this vector do we actually care about? And what direction is this vector really pointing in? Well, we see it's not pointing in any of these four directions that we have labeled here, this positive x, positive y, negative x, or negative y. And in fact, it seems to be pointing somewhat both in the positive x direction and the positive y direction. And that's because this vector actually is pointing in both of those directions. But since we have this coordinate axis set like this, we only really care about the parts of the vector, if you will, that are pointing in the x and y directions. So what we can do is what we can do is we can do something called resolving this vector into two components. And that's going to be the x component and the y component. So what this means is we simply say, well, this vector is pointing in sort of both the positive x and the positive y. So we can split it into two vectors, one pointing in the x direction and the other pointing in the y direction. So for instance, if we start here at the origin, we can draw this green vector going this way, and it's going to point in the positive x direction, so that if we drop a perpendicular from this point on this vector u down to the x-axis, that's going to form a right angle, and it's going to land on just the tip of this new vector right here. And this is not a perfect drawing, but you can imagine that we can make a right triangle just by connecting these two points, these two tips of these vectors. And so this vector is going to represent the x component of this vector u, and we're going to call this u sub x. And you can imagine, well, u is pointing some amount in the x direction, some amount in the y direction. This u sub x only represents the part of u that's pointing in the x direction. Similarly, we can draw a y component of this vector u, simply by going upward until we can form a um, right triangle, say around here. And we're going to call this vector here u sub y. And this is the y component of the vector u, but how much the u is pointing in the y direction. And so now we see, well, we can represent sort of this vector u in two different ways here. The first way, which we call polar form, is going to be just with the magnitude and the direction. And the polar form we can represent as an ordered pair of the magnitude of the vector u, and then the direction, the angle theta. So this polar form is just going to be magnitude u comma theta. And we can also represent this vector in what we call Cartesian form, which is what you might be more used to on this coordinate plane. And Cartesian form is going to be representing as the two components. So in this case, as you might be used to on this um, coordinate plane, we're going to put the x value first and then the y value. So here, this is going to be u sub x comma u sub y. And these two things both represent the same vector, just in different ways. One of them shows the magnitude and the direction, the other one shows the components of this vector, 
in the directions that we care about, which are the x and y directions, respectively. So now we need to find a way to convert between these two forms, because they're both useful in different cases. So what we can do, first of all, is if we sort of slide this y vector, this y component vector over here to the tip of the x vector, we can see, well, we can simply draw a vector pointing upward that is the y um, component. And it should land in the same point as this um, u is pointing in the first place. So now what we see is we have this right angle over here. And now we can do some trigonometry because we have this right angle. So if you recall the right angle definition of sine, we know that sine of theta is going to be the opposite side over the hypotenuse. The opposite side is going to be this u sub y over here. So I'm going to put that sine of theta equals magnitude of u sub y. And we're going to divide this over the hypotenuse length, which is going to be the magnitude of the full angle u. So I'm going to say sine of theta equals magnitude u sub y over magnitude u. So what we can do is we can now rearrange this um, equation right here to get that magnitude u sub y equals magnitude u sine of theta. Magnitude u times sine of theta. Similarly, if we, we can um, find the cosine of this um, theta over here. Well, cosine of theta, that's going to be the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. The adjacent side is this x component of this vector. So that's going to be called u sub x. And then we're going to divide it over magnitude of u. So again, we rearrange and we get that u sub x equals magnitude u cosine of theta. And notice that here for this u sub x and u sub y, we don't really need, we only need to really specify the magnitudes. We know what direction they're pointing in. They're pointing in the x and y directions. So only the magnitudes really matter. Now, if it, they were pointing in the negative directions, technically the magnitudes should still be positive. But it, um, in this case, with this definition, we can consider them to be negative. So if we get a negative magnitude, we can simply envision it as this vector pointing in the opposite direction, the negative direction. So with here, um, we can now get from the polar form coordinates into the Cartesian coordinates, which are the component vectors. So now how do we convert back from Cartesian to polar if ever needed? Well, first of all, we see this right angle, this right triangle here. One of the first things you might have learned in elementary school about right triangles was the Pythagorean theorem, which is that the sum of squares of the two legs equals the square of the hypotenuse. So applying that here, we get that well, the legs are going to be u sub x and u sub y, and the hypotenuse is just the full vector u. So what we get is that the magnitude of u sub x squared plus the magnitude of u sub y squared is going to equal the magnitude of u squared. So then we just square root this side over here, and we can get the magnitude of u from that. Now, what about this angle here? Well, we see tangent of theta, if you recall, it's going to be the opposite side over the adjacent side. So that's going to be magnitude u sub y over magnitude u sub x. And rearranging this here, or rather just taking the inverse tangent function of both sides, we get that theta equals the inverse tangent, or the arc tangent, if you will, or written as tangent to the negative one. This inverse tangent of the quantity magnitude u sub y over magnitude u sub x. And here's where we need to be careful, because if you know something about trig, you might know, well, since this tangent we can think of as the slope of this line, then if we have some other vector pointing in the opposite direction, then that's going to have the same tangent value. However, on, say, your calculator, or in general, the arctangent function, this inverse tangent function, only gives the values of theta that are to the, on the right side of the coordinate plane. Say we take the um, inverse tangent of the u sub y over u sub x, the x and y components of this vector here, pointing in the opposite direction of this original vector, and we plug it into our calculator, we take this inverse tangent, then we're going to get this angle, not this one. So here's where you need to sort of know about where your um, vectors are pointing, because the arctangent function is only going to give angles that are on the right side of the coordinate plane. So if you know that your vector is pointing to the on somewhere on the left side over here, 
you need to add 180 degrees or pi radians to get to this new angle. But essentially, we can now, with that correction, we can now sort of use this arctangent to figure out our angles of vectors using the components. So here are our final equations, which I'm going to underline. So we have u sub y, or magnitude u sub y equals magnitude u sine of theta. Magnitude u sub x equals magnitude u cosine of theta. This Pythagorean, u sub x squared plus u sub y squared equals u squared. And finally, theta equals the inverse tangent or the arc tangent of the quantity u sub y over u sub x. And in the next video, what we're going to do is look at some of the various operations we can perform on these vectors, which we've now defined.